In this tutorial, we are going to look at what seems to be a simple problem, but can sometimes prove difficult to solve. We're going to look at how we can convert multiple names to title case, meaning the first letter is capitalized. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. If you are gathering name information, it can come in multiple formats. You may want to standardize those strings to title case, capitalizing the first letter. The remaining letters could then be as they were entered, or you could do a conversion on them as well. Let's take a look at a problem we are planning to solve. Here we have an array of names, and notice how they are entered. Some are entered what we would say is correct, title case. Some are entered all uppercase, some are all lowercase. Notice we also have a name here that if correct, will have the second or the third letter uppercase as well, McKay. So we have a lot of different formats here. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to see if we can make all of them title case. Now, this problem is not too difficult, but sometimes if we don't work with strings a lot, we're not exactly aware how we can solve this. So this is what I'd like to tackle in this tutorial. So first thing we're going to do is set up a new variable. This is going to, this is going to contain the new array and it will have title case names. Now, since we have an array of names and we're creating a new array of names, but they're going to be title case, the map method is perfect for that. Now, in this tutorial, since we're solving a JavaScript problem, there may be multiple things I do, which I've taught in other tutorials. And so I'll reference those in the description section. And map is one of those. If you're not familiar with map, you can refer to that in the description section. I'll try to talk about these different commands, but I won't go into the same detail that I do in the tutorials that focus on them. So we're going to map to a new array way we do that is names.map. That's how we start it. Now, with map, we have to pass in a callback function. And this callback function is going to process each one of the names which is in this array. So the purpose of map is it iterates through all of these, passes them in one at a time to the function, and the function does whatever we indicate the function should do. So let's set that up. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing these tutorials, when I enter a callback function, I will do it as a regular function. I'll enter it as a regular function. But usually, when I'm writing my own code, a callback function, I will do as an arrow function. And that's what I'm going to do in this tutorial. So if you're unfamiliar with arrow functions, you can refer to a tutorial on that, which is referenced in the description. Now... When I set up this function, I want a variable that will contain each element as we cycle through those. And so that variable is going to be val. It's going to contain the value as it cycles through this array. Now, what are we going to return? Well, this is where we begin manipulating the string. So one thing that is nice with strings that you may not be aware of is a string is an iterable in JavaScript. Now that means that we can loop through that with a for of loop or we can address individual characters like we would address them in an array. So that's what I want to do here is I want to address the first letter and I'm going to do it this way. That will address the very first letter in each one of these as it's passed in. Now, what do we want to do with that first letter? Well, we want to, of course, convert that to uppercase. And so I'll use the to uppercase 
method to make that conversion. So right now we are returning the first letter converted to uppercase. Now we need to add to that the rest of the string. So an easy way to do that, especially if we just want to add what was entered, we don't want to do any conversion on it, but an easy way to do that is simply slice, use the slice method, and we're going to put just one number in there because we want it to go to the end of the string. And so it's going to start with the character position one, which is basically the second character, and it will return everything to the end of the array. And we're not going to process that all at all. It's going to be just like it was entered. So let's go ahead and put a semicolon at the end and then let's take a look at this. So let me open up the console and I will pull up that array. And here we see the names and you can see that they are all title case. Now in the case of this name here where everything was entered in uppercase characters, that didn't change. Now we could fix that by converting everything to lowercase. Let's look at that really quick. So if we just added a dot to lowercase here, Let's take a look at that again. That corrected Alfred, but notice what it did to McKay. It messed that up. The K is now lowercase as well, and it was entered as uppercase. So how can we deal with this? Let's go a little farther with this problem and see how we can correct this. So what I would do if I wanted to solve this problem is I would first check to see if not the first letter, but everything after the first letter is equal to everything after the first letter in uppercase. So basically what that would tell me is that it was entered in all uppercase. If it's entered in all uppercase, then I'll convert it to lowercase. If only some of it's uppercase, I won't convert it to lowercase. I'll just return what was entered. So let's modify this to do that type of thing. So we want to have a condition. We're going to use the ternary operator because I want to continue to work with an arrow function. And usually when I do arrow functions, I prefer it to be all on one line. If I start doing multiple lines, I prefer a regular function because you have to put the curly braces in anyway. So let's enter that condition first. So the condition is going to be this. We're going to do this slice. And we're going to convert it to uppercase, like that. And we're going to check to see if that is equal to the value slice, the same thing, without any conversion on it, OK? So we're going to check. That's our condition we're going to check. Now, if that equals true, meaning that if everything was entered in uppercase characters, that would make those two things equal. So if those two things are equal, then what we want to do is return the first character in uppercase plus all the other characters in lowercase, like that. However, if that's not true, then we want to return, I'm going to copy this here the first character in uppercase plus just the rest of the characters. Because if all those characters are not uppercase, we don't want to do anything with them. We want to just leave them as they were entered. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right. Let's take a look at that array again. Now McKay looks right, and notice Alfred looks right. And so we're able to do some nicer conversions on those strings. That seemed to work great for us. So once you know that a string is an iterable and you can reference each character similar to how you'd reference an array, it makes this a little more simpler. You don't have to use all of the methods that are available to strings to extract that character and put them together. I think this is an easier way to do it. Now one more comment I want to make about this statement. 
this is quite long and there's a lot in it. And an important thing about your JavaScript code is also that it should be readable. So you need to make a judgment on whether this is readable or not. Maybe the fact of using all of this concise syntax makes it less readable. And that's something to consider. And as you make that judgment, you also need to consider your audience. If that audience is just you, then it may not be a big deal. But if someone else is going to be looking at this code, you may want to make some changes there. Perhaps use a traditional if statement with a regular function expression. All right, now before we are done here, please hit the like button. And remember, I provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. Also, if you'd like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. There are additional benefits at certain levels. You can follow a link in the description for that. And you can also contribute by visiting my website. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. Also click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access this another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for a complete list of tutorials and courses. Thanks for watching.